I am the Guggenheim UBS Map Curator for the Middle East and North Africa. It's my pleasure to be with you all today at the Mackenzie Art Gallery here in Regina in Saskatchewan. I'm uh, delighted to be able to discuss and explore my curatorial practice and share that with yourselves. Uh, so Sarah, can you tell us a bit about that curatorial practice and your main areas of study? Well, I was a student at Goldsmiths College in London, both my BA and my MA, which really was a school that was forefronted for knowing about the, uh, well, launching the whole YBA phenomena. But somehow within my curatorial practice, I decided to look east of the, of the EU, if you'd rather say. And I'm very much interested in exploring non-Western art uh, paradigms and particularly artist-driven practices and dovetailing that within the concept and looking at the whole situation of diaspora artists, those that exist within two simultaneous places at once. So it's very much part of my curatorial focus and my projects. Great. So in your opinion, um, when does art cease to be local and start becoming global? Well, that's a really interesting question because I see that both are interrelated of sorts, the local and the global. We can't really consider the global without exploring its local impact and rather vice versa as well. So I think that it's part of a more complex uh, discussion where one is uh, interrelated with the other. For sure. Um, do you see uh, art collecting as a colonial process? Well, perhaps it started off being a little bit colonial, the whole idea of collecting something on our object or an artwork from some place over there. But if we think about contemporary art museums, modern art museums are reflecting on 20 and 21st century practices where most nations had become uh, sovereign states that were no longer part of a kind of colonial history. They had uh, more of a discussion around post-colonial histories. I think to complete the story of modernism, it's really essential to look at uh, strategies of collecting that go beyond Europe and North America. Great. Um, we hear you're writing about punk orientalism. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that and your interest in that topic? Well, my PhD research is centered around post-Soviet Orientalism and particularly looking at the part of the former Soviet Union of Central Asia and the Caucasus that was really um, kind of not seen as a peripheral uh, element of Soviet history. It was really on the margins and, and after the fall of the Soviet Union, it was really left to its own devices and I was very much interested in the strategies of the artists from that region that were coming of age as the Soviet Union was collapsing. I mean, it was a very exciting period of history, 1991. I mean, a few years prior was the collapse of the Berlin Wall and then the Soviet Union disintegrating, and uh, how artists grappled with these kind of global changes and their ramifications. And I'm interested in how they adopted, let's say, non-conformist strategies or rather punk strategies in order to comprehend some of the changes of living and working in divided societies. And in addition, I'm very much interested in expanding the uh, writing and the critical thinking around the study of Orientalism, which was um, really put forward by a scholar, Edward Said, within his uh, phenomenal book, uh, Orientalism. And it looked uh, uh, at the relationship between the way in which the West imagined the East. And it was a more of a study on the Near East. And I'm ex interested in expanding that to look at other areas, look at other histories as well that are not necessarily related to the Near East, but have undergone um, some form of um, colonial treatment or, or imperial histories. So bringing the two together like a bricolage of sorts, it's, it's quite interesting to explore that and to create new critical thinking around that. Great. So a little bit of a fun question. Um, where does your style influence come from? Well, uh, that's a, a nice question to ask uh, regarding style. I'm very much interested in interdisciplinary uh, and intersectional practices like where design meets um, art or where architecture or new technologies. And I'm very much interested in the way in which artists have also, female artists have also presented themselves um, in terms of, you know, using pattern, shape, color. A lot of important artists like Agnes Martin, Georgia O'Keeffe, Yaya Kusamo have, uh, you know, really... Uh, trended the fashion industry and I'm and I work in a creative discipline I'm fortunate to have friends who are also designers who also reflect upon um, the kind of intersection between fashion and art and I think that uh, being fortunate enough to be a curator that I it can afford me to dress a little bit more creatively and to express myself through my attire. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so to finish off what can we look forward to from your uh, talk tonight? Well, tonight I'll be giving a, a little bit of a glimpse into um, curating that is very much focused on the non-Euro-American uh, centric 
uh, desire. It is more looking at uh, art that is happening globally, ideas that are happening, artists uh, that are exploring, living between two worlds, artists that are looking at uh, social media, the internet, the influences of the millennial generation, but also looking at that from a global perspective. It's important to kind of look at uh, new emerging centers, but also reflect upon the location or the kind of idea of uh, specificity of site. And I hope that um, audiences will also get a chance to look at what's happening beyond borders. And I think that artists provide us with a glimpse of the world that we don't ordinarily get to see. So I hope that I can share that with you all. And I, I look forward to seeing you.